Asami Dokubo and the Nigerian Army lock arms of allegation of old tax. Tonight on Plus Politics, we discuss oil bankery menace in Nigeria and the possible solutions to them. This is Plus Politics. I am Messi Boko. The Nigerian army has reacted to the allegation by ex-Niger Delta militant leader Asari Dokubo that some cabals in the military are involved in all theft in the region. Dokubo made the claims when he visited President Bola Tunubu in Abuja on Friday. The director of Army Public Relations Officer Oyema Mwachuku reacted by saying that the Nigerian army has been vigorously engaged in the fight against illegal oil bankery, oil thefts, illegal oil refining, and other sun-dried crimes in the region with positive results. These, he said, was evidence in, in the increase in daily oil production from the abysmal dwindling output in the past. Much of said the Nigerian army had zero tolerance for any compromise on the part of its troops and would not condone any act of economic sabotage. Well, joining us to discuss this is John Desmond, a development expert and public affairs analyst, uh, who is also a member of the APC and Fine Face Dunamini. Uh, he's the executive director of Youth and Environmental Advocacy Center, also a national facilitator project with the artisanal crude oil refiners for modular refineries in the Niger Delta region. And then Okunabon Katara is also here with us, a public affairs analyst and Taiwo Ola. Poor day. I hope I got that correctly. Or Lakpa Day, uh, a broadcast journalist. Thank you so much, Lakpa Day, and gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us on. Good evening, Mercy. Good evening, Nigeria. So, thank you very much. Good evening. All right. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us. So, l let me go straight to Fine Face. Uh, I'd like to ask you what your thoughts are as regards the allegation by Asari Dokubo uh, in this regards. Thank you for having me, Messi, and good evening, Nigerians. Uh, to me, I don't think there is anything to bother about overthinking about what Asari Dokubo said. This is what I have also been saying over the years, not over the weeks, not over the months, not over the days. I have been saying this over the years. It's, it's, it's a simple thing. But what I notice in this country is that it depends on who says what at what particular time. Not that what Asari Dokubo said is new or different. This is what we've been saying since uh, 2013. This is the 20, in 2013 we organized for the first time what we call national conference uh, on oil theft in Nigeria. And on April 28th, last two, last last two months, I also organized similar conference, national conference on organized crime in Nigeria and the Gulf of Guinea. And we said the same thing. It's not new. So the army may decide to, I don't expect a different uh, reaction from them. This is what they should say as an institution, because I know quite well that it's not every uh, member of the Nigerian army that is involved in crude oil theft. And it's not every member of the Navy that is involved in crude oil theft. These are allegations that I think they need to work towards purging themselves of it. But that does not in any way mean that what Alaji Asari Dr. Bob said is different from what you already know and what exists. They know, they, they are aware. It's not only the army, it's not only the navy, it's also include the police, it also includes men of Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. It's an organized crime that security operatives are aiding and abating in Nigeria. So there is nothing fundamentally you know, new from what Asari Dr. Bob said. It's what even the army, they already also know. Even those who are part of the, you know, uh, Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources, they are also part of this. It's an organized crime that they are carrying out. So there's nothing fundamentally wrong about what uh, Asari Dokubo have said. So what they need to do is to look inwards and try to push themselves of mm. the allegation of them getting involved in good oil You know, you know, when you say it's an allegation, it's an allegation because uh, really? you don't have the facts to prove. Again, then, if you say that you have been saying this over yeah. time. Do you have facts? Are there statements? Do you have documents, written or unwritten, audio whatsoever, you know, to prove that the military is involved? Because it's a lot of accusation. I mean, it's a lot to, you know, to take in uh, when you say that the military 
uh, it's literally involved in all thefts that's been going on. It's something that's been going on for a very long time in the country. There are facts everywhere. There are details about this. Everywhere. It's in every document. Just go on the internet, you see them. No, but no, I'll no, give you no, two, no. two practical when, examples. When you, say, when you say that there are facts everywhere in the document, we're saying are there instances that you can mention? And then you okay. probably have evidence or document to show. Let's not yeah, forget let that just, we're saying that every, everybody, I mean, you were a thief until uh, there's uh, evidence you, you can be, <laughs> you're being proven by a court so of competent jurisdiction. Yeah. So again, it's me, still an accusation until you have substance to back it. So do you have substance? <laughs> Are there any evidence? Do you have documents, audio recording whatsoever, you know, to say that the military has been involved in uh, all thefts in our country? Now, now, let me say this. I have been working on this for over 12 years. Since 2011, I've been working on this. Remember, I also work, like you mentioned in your introduction, as the national facilitator of project with artisanal crude oil refiners for modular refineries in the Niger Delta. I work with you who are involved in the entire process. Now, I'll give you two examples of where men of the security operatives have been allegedly you know, mentioned as getting involved in oil theft and, and oil theft in the Niger Delta. The reverse, immediate past River State Governor, His Excellency Yen Someze Wanwike, talked about the fact that a, a, police, a police officer in the Emoha local government area owned a dump. When that allegation was made, I joined the Emoha local government chairman, Dr. Chi Deloy, to visit the sites. And I have pictures and videos of the sites owned and operated by a GPO that was in MOA. Secondly, the River State Governor also raised an allegation about a member of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps getting involved in crude oil theft. Based on his allegation, that particular officer was transferred from River State. Just two months ago, we also got information, which you may have also heard, and my men also reported to me that some army, some army personnel in Emoha local government area, precisely in Bumwepe community and the boundary with uh, 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 Dundele, Rundele community, were involved in crude oil theft artisanal refining process, and they were disarmed by civilians. Their guns collected, their uniform taken and they were thrown naked. The information is out there, and when that incident happened, I was the one that raised it to the public for the first time. If you Google on the internet, you are going to see information about from me how the army held Rumwepe's community hostage as a result of their involvement in artisanal refining and group type process, and them being disarmed and their uniform taken. It's a public knowledge. We have a lot of facts about this. So I think they need to see what they can do, because these are allegations we are putting out there. And they know that some of their men, especially those who are involved in what they call the Operation Data Safe, is a joint military tax force that are involved in this. So they are all part of this. So they should look for a way of stopping this since the government is not trying to look at a way of... But we are suffering, Niger Delta people. Our environment is being polluted and we are suffering so much as a result of their activities. All right, then. Open up on Kataria. I'm sure that you, you have been listening to this. But then again... Uh, maybe we need to just go back memory lane. Uh, there are several reports that are valid, a report in 2013 where Niger was losing over 300,000 barrels of crude oil per day uh, mm -hmm. to oil theft, pipeline vandalism, and uh, you want to go on with the lease. And this is despite the fact that the federal government had put efforts to curtail the diversion by increasing security spending in recent times. So again, uh, I'm asking, does this not validate the accusation of Asari Dokubo that the military is really involved in all bunkering, thefts, and what have you? Well, that the military's involvement in oil bunkering, illegal bunkering, is not in doubt. I know that uh, the military immediately will be able to defend itself. But that does not in any way appreciate the fact that it is fully, I repeat, fully involved in bunking, in illegal bunking in the Niger Delta. Now you ask yourself a rhetorical question. Who is in charge of uh, the protection of the seaway? The Navy. You remember just as I was it last year some three years ago, when a ship laden with oil 
left the country only for another country to seize the ship, arrest the people, and send back to the people. What was the Navy doing? What was the Navy doing? I mean, it is well known that the military men are fully involved with oil bomb. It is well known. So it is just a face saving measure when they come out to say, you know, a lot of people say you don't have proof. There are certain things that you don't expect someone to do, especially on air. You know, I might catch you sleeping with somebody else's husband. You know that you're guilty. I know. One or two other persons know. But because it is not on videotape, you say, here is the proof. You, 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 you can rely and pass your judgment as circumstantial I mean, uh, 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 evidence. Uh, sorry, uh, circumstances, yes, evidence. Not necessary. It is actually only in murder cases you can even talk of proving beyond reasonable doubt. Only in murder cases. The rest you glean from the circumstances. So this issue of where is the proof? Because you're actually fine faith. Where is the proof? Where is the this? Where is the that? Most of them going into bunkery, remove their tag names. That's what they do. And most times, some of them might not even be uniform. When Asari was in the trenches, I went to see him countless times. There was nowhere he was that I did not go to, not once, not once. And I saw what was going on. Even recently, I went to Aouda. Let me mention the people. In Aouda, I saw what was going on. And the military men were more or less protecting them. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about something that happened just maybe about, um, about three months ago. Yeah, no. Even in Aouda. So they cannot deny the fact. I mean, I saw three months ago, the military, they were doing the illegal bunkering in the place, and the military was protecting them. They were in uniform. In uniform. So you cannot come and tell me, try to deny the people the fact that they military, but they're really fully involved in all this. How do you, and when I mean they really, from top to bottom. From top to bottom. You heard what uh, Five said about the government of Russia. He said it to their face. It was a courtesy call. They paid him a courtesy call, and he told them that. Yeah, that the bunker situation is being fostered by your the involvement of your men. They could not deny it. He said, and if you argue, I'll publish it. I'll see. It. Of course, he had security reports. We had other reports. Even the civil defense guy, what happened? The policeman, what happened? Nobody told us that they were disciplined. Nobody told us that uh, some punitive measures were taken against them. Nobody. What's the scenario? They transfer you out of the state. We are talking of something, things that have happened. We talk of the civil defense, we talk of the police. Then when the army, when they uh, send somebody to the states, I think the, it's DOC now, whatever. It is a big brigade commander. When they send her, he paid a court to call They did not send that to him. The former governor told him that. Because of the suit problem that we had in the states. He told him. He said, your men are involved. And if you argue with me, I will prove it. Go and talk to your man. That was what we said. So what are they trying to deny? You can't deny the fact that the military is living. It wouldn't have been possible without the military. It wouldn't have. So, so, so the question then would be how? You know, he, he, I mean, everyone is saying that the military is involved. How. how is the military involved then? Uh, the military has also put out a disclaimer to say they're not involved. So they how? They tell you to go there and arrest. And let me they tell you to go there and arrest you. Go there and protect and get your court. What is the how? They? What is the how? The boys are doing the bunker. The military men are there. Allow them to go ahead with the nefarious act. And at the end of the day, they are being paid for that. It's as simple as that. We even also talked to the policeman who had his own. His own. That people are now working for him. You do, they allow you to carry on with these activities, these illegal activities. At the end of the day, you pay. That's the how they're involved. Not that they are going to open the pipe, break the pipe, the pipes or open the pipe well. So, no, that's not it. 
They are allowed to buy to buy who are well experienced in doing. Then for you to move to go and sell or whatever, you pay the military man. It's like kidnapping. It's like a gunshot. The military man, although some were involved, like the captain, and that matter swept under the captain. Some were involved, but they've been telling you everything as they kidnap the military man. As you're even going to pay the ransom, they tell you give me this. Don't worry. By the time you get that, the people understand. You see another checkpoint. They are due to them. It was said openly. It was on air. These things were said on air. The military did not come They asked them why. They said, because we are not well remunerated for the job we are doing. If we die today, our family suffers. So this is how we make our money. It was on air. It was on air. On traditional media. We are not talking about... This is talk of uh, uh, state look so you how do you ascertain the veracity or appropriateness of the, of the claim? But this is on air. Traditional media. Okay. So that's how they make their money. That's well, how they're involved. You are meant to arrest rather than arrest the aid and abet. That's your level of complicity. That's your level of involvement. Open a bank, Katara. Let's quickly uh, connect with John Desmond this uh, evening and, and share his thoughts as well on this issue. John, thank you so much for joining us. Desmond, can you hear me? All right, then unfortunately we haven't. Uh, or we do not have a connection with uh, Desmond or John. Hopefully, we're able to connect with him. Uh, Opodobon Katare. I can't hear you. Can you hear me I now? I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you now. So, just before we get to Taiwo, again, the concern, because you already know how the system works and with the law. Uh, if you say there's an allegation, uh, Asari Dokubo has not mentioned names of who and who is involved in, uh, especially when you say the military is holistic. So that's like a vague thing to say that the military is involved. Can you literally categorize all of that? And then again, I'd say you, you've also said, yeah, truly the military is involved. But how can you say the military is involved? Do you have evidence? Let's even say that you're called upon to put out this evidence. Do you have evidence to present that the military is involved in uh, all theft that's been going on for a very long time in our country? Evidentially proof. Depending on that, is the bane. I find it is rightly so. Do, do you have an evidence to prove? Well, that's what I said. That, that is the bane because it is not there. Like I told you, I did not snap. But even if you go today, unless the they, they must have sent them away. If you go today, it is, it, it is it's something that happened. It's ongoing. I just use the issue of um, um, uh, the case of, uh, what is that in public? Uh, infidelity as an example. You say, do you have an evidence? I saw you having your naked in the bathroom with a man. So so did you take a picture so of it? Do you have a you video have, recording of it? Do you because not have, I, I come out to tell you, do you have an evidence? Why would I take a picture? I don't know that <laughs> Why would I take a picture? Well, but, but, I mean, this, this, this can just be mere I mean, statements. Again, I just answered your question. Let me substantiate. The ID will tell the policeman on the road, uh, no checkpoint. Don't take it. Don't, don't do this. Don't do that. The policeman will go ahead. Then tomorrow you have to. Is the ID blind? Is the CP blind? Don't apply that rule. Then you can't have to. Where's the evidence? Let me tell you, there are certain things. It's like giving a judge a bribe. You say the judges are corrupt. You already know that because you are probably you also you've also given him uh, some some of them right. But tomorrow now they're going to come and prove it. I am not Senator Buka Sawa that will come and mention the woman. I am not. But it is for them to use the internal mechanism to fish these persons out and punish them. But I will not because I also gave the right. So why would I come and say uh, this judge is corrupt? But when I say it's corrupt, I know what I'm talking about. But I will never tell you that I get it right. So most times when these allegations come, it's because you probably partook in them. But you cannot mention their names. The only thing is, let the uh, security personnel go and investigate these things. You do. You, every information you get in life, even if you're not going to use it as a sword, use it as a shield. Don't dismiss it. Investigate it. The man who is also this is aware, he's quite confident of the fact. He sees of the fact. It's a first serving measure. Who doesn't know in this country that the military is involved? Who doesn't know? 
You can't. There is no body that comes out. If the military is not involved, then the military is, 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 is negligent. Because you are giving billions of naira to protect our uh, 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 land and uh, uh, so uh, If you don't know what is going on there, then you are negligent. Uh, uh, and what are you doing? Whichever way you look at it, the military cannot extricate itself from any blame. Whichever way you look at it. This bombing thing is going on daily. And if you say you're not aware, then what are you doing with the money that you are being paid? Uh, uh, let's go back to the now. Open a bank diary, let's go back to It's not hidden. <laughs> Let's go back. You, you know, let's go back to your colleague who's also uh, part of this conversation. Fine face right there. Uh, I mean, you know how it is. You are an accusation is still an accusation because you can't literally say someone is a criminal until they have been proven by a court of competence jurisdiction and that's exactly what the law says okay, and, when, and we, we, we can get out of that so again y yes uh fine phase yourself have literally said that the military you agreed to the thought of asari dokubo that the military is uh, it's really involved uh, in all bunkering or theft, whatever it is, however it is you, you put it. But then again, fine face, are you still with us? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. And I, I don't think the allegation, whether or not the military, the Navy, the police, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps is involved in oil theft is new. That is no news. That is, if you ask 100 persons on the streets of Nigeria, let me not say just Niger Delta. No, no, no. So, but, so, so, I mean, we probably may not be disputing that fact again. But there but, but, are but, evidences everywhere. Hmm. Evidences everywhere. Uh, and one of the things that I cited that I think that you mentioned is that you should cite an instance of old theft where the military is involved or the army. And that's what we're saying. Because at the end of the I day... Have mentioned, I have mentioned three, two from the River State Governor. Of course. I have mentioned... Another one from uh, Emo Haloko government area, Rumoipe to be precise, which I released a statement about where they went to collect their guns back after the boys disarmed them in the process of getting involved in oil theft. And Messi, let me tell you, anything that has to do with oil theft and artisanal refineries is an organized crime. It's not a one-man business. Okay. But, but, but we need for to... Them to move, for them to move it from point A to point B without security, you can't do it. This is past 7 p.m. in the night. If you were in River State after this program, I would have taken you in my car and just drive you across the Uniport, Uniport Bridge, the Choba Bridge. You will see police, military checkpoint, all of them on the road, collecting money, stopping. Oil, oil they know the routes and where they stay. This is not news. What we should be talking about is how... This statement that has been made by Asari Dokubo now that we have been making that not been taken seriously. This allegation, how are they working on it to making sure that it's stop? These people pay so much bribe to people within their system to be posted to the Niger Delta to get involved in this. They make phone calls to the boys, come and start operation, and they commence operation. I know some communities where and uh, 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 where where uh, uh, houseboats with the security they are on the river. And they have called the boys to come and start operation that they are lacking money. This is a common thing that we all know in the Niger Delta. We are more concerned about this because of the environmental impact of the oil theft that is going on. Loss of resources to local communities that depend on the water bodies that is being used to perpetrate this organized crime against the people. This is where I am concerned about. And the loss of revenue to the country because I believe in energy transition. And I think that as much as we are yet to be able to explore the oil, we cannot have money to transit the country from fossil fuel to clean and renewable energy. So we need the oil to pump for some time to be able to have resources to transition the country. But if the current level of oil theft is going on, then we are not making any progress within the country. Well, well, Nigeria phase, uh, is the only country where you have this kind of thing happening. And it is a shame. That's a good concern, fine phase. But let us be honest with ourselves. In as much as we are going to condemn this illegal bunker, that is not the problem you have. The problem is your leadership. Because if, yes, if the leadership, if you have a prudent leadership, definitely even with the NATO we have, would have gone beyond where we are in terms of development. It has to do with leadership. So 
while I do with it, because your statement, anybody who listens to you will think you're trying to extricate the leadership from the problems we're having. The leadership is fully involved. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> excuse me, but even the Minister for Petroleum, former Minister for Petroleum, Gwari is involved. Because you said it's a cartel. No, what does the under? Even to you said you said it's a cartel. That's why you're removing subsidy. Yes. From 2015 to when you left office, cartel. You are going to name and shame them. You did not name and shame them. You're, you were the petroleum minister. So you are not. You are equally guilty. Well, well Desmond, Desmond, yeah. are you still yeah. with yeah. us? Uh, Katara, we need to understand we have orders. Uh, we still have Desmond with us. Desmond, are you here? Okay, sorry. I, in fact, I've been having the program for seven days. Desmond, can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Desmond, please, if you can hear me, say something. Well, then, uh, I, I think this is the point where we just go on a break, and when we return, uh, we continue with the conversation right here on Plus Politics. Please stay with us. Well, we're still back with Plus Politics uh, tonight, and we have a gentleman with us. We have Upanabong Katara. We also have uh, Femi also on the line. I hope I'm not mistaken. And then we have uh, Taiwo with us tonight but let me go to Taiwo because we haven't spoken with Taiwo in a bit Taiwo recently we're getting close to the solution I, I remember that the national security advisor Babagana Mugono said that uh, Nigeria may lose 23 billion dollars in 2023 if crude oil theft is unchecked my question now is what exactly can we do to curtail all of this uh, thank you very much uh the let me start with the visit by uh alaji mujahideen asaru dokubu to mr president on friday at that visit uh he said to mr president that uh, he came to pay homage and uh, when he was done with mr president he addressed uh journalists the state of correspondence and that was where uh, he gave that revelation that 99% uh, uh, of uh, the oil theft in the country are perpetrated by the military. And uh, since then, it has continued to generate uh, various uh, uh, reactions. And coming back to what the National Security Advisor, uh, uh, General Babangana Moguno said, of course, uh, we know we have been battling with um, the menace of oil theft for so many years. And um, for that reason, the country has continued to lose huge sum of revenue uh, that will have been used for uh, developmental purposes in the country. And uh, I also recall that uh, uh, the Nigerian Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative uh in in april this year said that between 2009 and uh, year 2020 that nigeria lost over 600 million barrels of oil to oil theft and if you look if, if you put that into naira figure that's uh, over uh, several trillions of naira uh between that period that uh, uh the nigerian extractive transparency uh, initiative uh, talked about so there is every need for uh, the current administration led by uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu to do the needful in ensuring that uh, we curb this menace because whether we like it or not, uh, <laughs> we are challenged by infrastructural <laughs> decay. And these are some of the money that uh, if it actually comes into the country's coffers, we can use for developmental purposes, we can uh, use to develop the health sector, we can use to develop the education sector, we can use to also uh you know fund our military uh to fight insurgency kidnapping and banditry and the like that uh, uh the country is being challenged by so uh, the, uh, the president uh, uh, like i said uh, deserves every other support every other major stakeholder must come around and give necessary advice and uh, particularly when it comes to oil theft you and i can never be part of it because we don't have the capacity we do have the, the logistics to do so. So uh, it's like 
uh, when you say the, the, the crown of the king is got missing in the palace, do you ask ordinary subjects uh, of that kingdom? No, you ask the palace guards. No, you ask the security men within the palace. And that's the reason why you cannot tell, uh, wish away uh, the allegations uh, from uh, Elijah Asari Bukubo that 99% uh, of the oil thefts uh, in the country are perpetrated by the military. And quickly, there were, there, there were reactions from the military, particularly the Navy. Uh, the spokesman for the Navy, uh, Commander Adido Tuayo Von, uh, was quick to react and said that uh, Asari Dokubo made that allegation so that he can uh, uh, get uh, whether support or request uh, from, in that, from Mr. President. And the military, on the, hand, on the other hand, also challenged uh, Elijah Sari de Kubo to name names that uh, he, 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 he who comes to equity must also come with clean hands. You can't just uh, but, uh, you know, give a bogus, uh, ambiguous allegation that uh, you must be able to also pinpoint uh, those who are also perpetrating this thing because you also have a background as regards uh, uh, monitoring our oil facilities. We know Asaru de Kubo doing that. We also know government uh, Tompolo, particularly during the regime of uh, <coughs> former President Gulo Jonathan. These are people who are also major stakeholders in the Niger, Niger Delta region that you can never wish away. So the president, it is never too late and it's better to be late than never. We know what has happened in the past. Moving forward now, every, every measure must be taken to ensure that uh, we come these uh, uh, by illegal activities that we can say uh, uh, that, well, that what, what we can to uh, some cartels. That well, we can tantamount to some cartels that are denying the country uh, the huge resources from this oil theft. And then, uh, if I could recommend, uh, we know that our military, particularly the Navy, they patrol uh, our waterways every other time so why are we still talking about uh uh high theft when we know we have a uh, uh, navy on, on the standby every other minute 24 hour surveillance on the waterway so who are the people behind this oil theft if not the same people that uh asari de kubo has accused and again why can't we also deploy drones with drones you can sit back in your office and you don't exactly go on on our waterways. So these are some of the measures that I think the should be taken deploy at, to cut this menace of uh, illegal attempt, oil bunkering, particularly in the Niger Delta region. Well, Taiwo, before we move to uh, open a bunker, Tari, and then fine face on the other side, again, you know, very brilliant. And I think that you have raised valid questions that we have been asking. If the government has improved spending over time in terms of security, and then again, we cannot literally boast that uh, old theft has reduced. You also have several operations that have been put out. Then what exactly are we dealing with? But if you say that then we, we begin to use drones, these drones are not, you know, operated by themselves. Uh, of course, we understand that there's AI at the system, in the system right now, uh, where you have artificial intelligence being used. But that's really not the case. So... Uh, if you're saying that we're deploying drones and all of that, do you think that that's enough? Because uh, you still have a system where the drones themselves are not operated by themselves. They're being operated by humans and people. So again, what exactly are we dealing with? But I move away to um, Opunabon, Katara and Fine Face. So I start off with Opunabon, Katara. There's been an operation that was flagged off in, in, in April, that was in 2022. And then, of course, you have it saying, stop the thief uh, at the One River State uh, uh, jetty. Okay? So, uh, if this operation has been ongoing, exactly. So, so, if you had operations where government has learned to say we need to stop activities, why exactly are we still talking about old theft? And do you then think that it makes sense that Asari Dokubo would be alleging that the military is involved in, you know, sabotage of the entire system? Well, to a very large extent, Mercy, you answered the question. This one. Did I? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> okay. But don't worry. Uh, let's pass it. Let me answer it. The truth about it, but let me quickly respond to what I think is Taiwan said, my brother Tyrone said, when they talked of drones, 
I think you are forgetting quickly that that was how we had the beavers. What happened? Like Messi rightly said, these things are controlled by men. The drones might have problems. There might be malfunction when it's time to operate. And when it's not time to operate, they will work perfectly. So let us leave the drones because they are controlled by men and not spirits or, the, or God in heaven. On the issue of uh, operation, whatever they call it, you know, we are used to beautiful nomenclatures and so on. Just like our laws, we don't have problem with the law. We have problems with implementation of the law. They have all those things in place. Most times to justify the amounts they collected. Who is going to operate them? I tell you of a story. Um, 2004 or so. He's late now, so I can mention his name. In 2004, there was this you know, the, uh, um, militants clashed on Hospital Road. It was more or less like the, the theater. Hospital Road was like more or less a theater where they come to exercise their, their prowess. Military, they did, uh, militants clashed, and I called the AC operations there. And I said to him, I said, look at what is going on, because my office is an hospital room. So look at what is going on here. He immediately called his boys. And do you know what they said to him? They said, that no fuel, APC. That is, um, this APC, I'm not carrying, 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 no fuel. Then he said, okay, let's go and buy fuel. So guy, even the tire said, we get from all kinds of excuses. And at the end of the day, when I saw him in the evening, I cut it a long story. He said, this was what happened. But eventually somebody came and told him that these boys were empowered by the government. If they will not go and die for nothing. So in essence, what am I trying to tell you? Most of these characters, because they benefit tremendously, what I'm, the point I'm making is they all have interest. Because they benefit tremendously from this thing. They will even tell you, if at all, you have a sincere man controlling from the control room. Those are the people that will even come to tell you, by so so time, this man will be in the control room. So be careful, you just hold on. When he's out of the control room, I'll tell you to move. It. There is high level complicity. So it's not all about operation this, operation that, and operation this. It's all rubbish. It has to do with sincerity and commitment on the part of the officers. Otherwise, you are talking about the bunker. The bunker, if you are not talking about bunker, wherever you have bunker, you have the, you, have, you ought to have the civil defense and the, and the naval officers. Where are they? The ones that are there are the ones that are colluding with these people, these persons to perpetrate the crime. So it's not to do what you launched. What you launched is the same material. You don't even need to launch. If you really want to combat this, you don't need to launch. So it's all about commitment, it's all about service, it's all about sincerity. It is not how many things you launch. It is not operation the tiger, operation the scorpion, operation this. Then when you do that, then they now buy new tasks for them. Pump money in. The commander is eating like what Gura Tai and Co. were doing. And after this, the former NSA came on air to say, look, the money is released. There is nothing going to justify that. That's the former NSA. Their successors said the same thing. Rather, they were rewarded with ambassador alarm. In Nigeria. So it's not about the launch. This launching is another way. It's like a gravy train, another way to raise money. Okay. And once those monies are raised, you see them parade. The victims are other citizens on the road. You see an army man, what is his business? He's beating up a civilian on the road. What's his business? That's what you see. That is where their power ran. They will not even go after the Boko Haram. They will be beating up civilians on the road. So it's not, it's, it, it has to be, and it has to come from the top. What I expect is to say, well, as I don't know, Melo, I call him Melo, I still call him Melo, but then he's now for the problem. And I still call him Melo. Is that probably my. my open about, topic. open about, let's quickly share the thoughts but of Fireface because what we're out of time. What is to say, look, this is the allegation. Call the Sabbath, okay, he has dismissed them, they've been running with that, they've been 
But they are acting well, brother. I want this to stop. Why the president, if Mr. President is sincere, not the former then job president I'm talking about, I'm not talking about Guaru, who was a disgrace of If the president is sincere, this thing will stop to even if it doesn't stop to reduce the Open up on Qatar, we are out of time, but we need to connect with Fine Face uh, for his thoughts now. Fine Face, okay, do so we still much. have you? Fine Face, do we still have you? Oh, no, unfortunately, we have been disconnected. Uh, but, but but as we cost it down, you probably uh, sure that you are the one that we have now. Uh, following the conversation that we have, of course, the statement that was made by the National Security Advisor, Babagana Mugono, uh, saying that Nigeria may probably lose $23 billion <coughs> in 2023 if oil or crude oil theft is unchecked. Uh, I ask you, what ways do you think this present government administration led by uh, Tunubu uh, can come in against the fight of oil theft in Nigeria? Are you asking me? Yes, please. Am I doing one? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> okay, Taiwo is there, but I think he spoke to that briefly. Then I think it's your okay. turn. Okay, fine. It's simple. Like I said, it's time to do a sincerity and commitment on the part of the president. And it's not going to. It's not going to be eliminated overnight. So, so but, but but with these allegations, I'm so sorry. Uh, but with this allegation that we have already on board, do you think that what's necessary is that, you know, the president fires, you know, the service chiefs or, you know, probably ransack the entire system if you said that the military no, 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 is literally no, 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 involved? Sure. What exactly can first this... Of first and foremost, this was not going to be there. The father didn't recall. We're talking of firing of service. That is not the part of the service. It has to do with the president. If, for example, now you give an order, Matching order. Not the order that we are going to do, it's the general of police to go to the location for those that did not go and said they were going to investigate after the matter. That's not the kind of order. If he gives an order and uses one as a sacrificial lamb that will disobey that order, the, the problem is most times the orders that disobey slaughter with impunity. And when these things are done and one is not going to do it, the forget about them who know it and so the man will do power. But when the yuan is being used as an example of the scapegoat, all that will fall in line. All you need to do is give a matching order to the government and the civil defense. So say, I want this thing reduced to the various minimum, if not eliminated. I tell you, there are two casualties. One or two persons will die, no doubt about that. But it will reduce. Definitely not eliminated, but it will reduce. Okay. But when you have this major fair attitude, it is only what the deep layer of paper you read. Nothing will happen. Nothing will go on. All right, uh, gentlemen, we have to let it go at this point in time. Uh, for the want of time, uh, thank you so much for being part of the show. Panabal Katara, thank you so much. And uh, uh, Ty will thank you as well for also being part of the conversation. We do appreciate you. Okay, well, uh, I'm sure that you gentlemen can hear me. We'll probably have this conversation uh, after this time. But that's it on the show tonight on Plus Politics. We will return tomorrow. Thank you. I'm Messi Boko. Have a good evening.